All right then, gang. So up until now, all of our animations have followed a linear speed from A to B, right? They don't start slow and then magically speed up halfway, or they don't start fast and then slow down towards the end. They start and end at the same speed. Now in Flutter, we can change this and we can control the speed, acceleration and deceleration of animation by using curves. Now curves are just that, they're curves on a graph that look a bit like this and they signify the speed of an animation at different points in time during that animation. So the X direction going upwards here, that represents the animation value from beginning to end, in this case from zero to one. And the T direction going across, that represents the time or the duration of the animation. So imagine that the bottom right here is the starting point of the animation and the top is the end. Now a linear progression without using a curve would just go straight up at a constant speed. For example, if we're moving something from this point to this point, it would just go straight up at the same speed, right? But curves speed up and slow down points of the progression. So if we take a look at this, if we can play it, then we see that this curve makes it bounce a little bit and then go up, right? If we play this curve, then it bounces a bit and goes up. Let's look at some different ones. I'm gonna to go to decelerate, so it gets slower towards the end. And if we take a look at some of these down here, let's see easing quad, you can see that this speeds up a little bit towards the middle and then starts to slow down again slightly at the end. And there's these easing quartz, it speeds up a lot right here and then starts to very slightly slow down at the end. Now, generally speaking, the steeper the curve at any point like here, at that point, the animation is gonna be quicker. And the shallower the curve, so when it's just going quite horizontal over here, that means it's gonna be slower during that point. So now let's try using some curves in our project for our animations. So the first animation I want to add a curve to is gonna be this screen title right here. So when it comes down and fades in, I want to add a curve to that. Now that is the trip or the screen title rather. And the first thing I'll do is change the duration from 500 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds, just so we can see the effect of this for a little longer. And I'll also change the top margin from times in by 20 to 50. Again, just to exaggerate the effect so we can preview what's happening a little easier. All right, so if we save this so far and preview again, we're gonna see that go down a further distance and take a little bit longer. All right, so now let's try adding a curve to this animation. So basically, we can add a curve property to any built-in animation widget like animated opacity, animated position, animated container, and we can also add it into the tween animation builder, which we have right here. So I could add a curve inside this. I'm gonna do it below the duration, and we'll say curve to do this. And to access all of the curves built into Flutter, we use the curves object, and then we can say dot whatever curve we want to use. So to begin with, let's try ease in and we'll go with quartz. All right, so save this and let's preview by clicking restart and just watch the title up here. So you can see it speeds up towards the end and in the middle. All right, so that's a little bit different. Doesn't look great, but we can see it working. Okay, so let's try a new one. This time I'm gonna go back and say, I want to try the bounce one. So we'll try bounce in and save that and restart over here. And now we can see that little bounce effect when it comes in. Again, doesn't look great, but you can see the effect. I'm gonna settle on one which I quite like, which is ease in. So I can say dot ease in like this, save it. And I think this looks quite natural. So it's a very subtle effect, but you can see that it kind of eases in now. Okay, so now I wanna change this back to 20 and I'm gonna change this back to 500. Now we've previewed that. I'm gonna refresh just to see that once more time. And again, it is gonna be a very subtle effect. Doesn't do much in this situation, but you can see that we can use these curves to control the speed of the animation at different points. 
Okay, so that's using a curve inside an implicit widget, but what if we wanted to use a curve alongside an animation controller? Well, let's go to the heart widget over here, and you can see we've got our controller and the two different animations. We've got the color animation and the size animation. So what if we wanted to create a curve for both of these or any of these animations? Well, we can do, we can create a new curved animation. So first of all, I'm gonna create a new variable animation and call this curve. Now down here, I'm going to create a new curved animation. So we'll take that variable we just created, curve, and set it equal to a curved animation, like so. Now, first of all, we say, what is the parent of this curved animation? In other words, what is controlling it? Well, again, it's gonna be this controller right here. So we say the parent is the controller. And so now the controller is basically gonna control this curved animation because it still has the duration and the ticker, etc. and the curved animation needs that. So we now have this hooked up with the controller. We also need to specify the curve that we want to use. So I can say here, curve, and then again, use the curves object. And from that, let's try something like slow middle. So basically it starts a bit faster, slows down in the middle, ends a bit faster. But again, this is gonna be a really subtle effect. Okay, so we have the curve now, but then how do we apply that curve to these different animations? Because automatically it doesn't do that. Yeah, we've associated it with the controller, but we still just use the controller right here and kind of bypass the curve. So instead of saying right here, we want to use the controller inside the animate method, we can say we want to use the curve that we've created right here instead. And under the hood, it's still gonna use that controller because the parent of the curve is that controller, but now also we're applying this curve to this animation as well. And we could do the same thing for this over here. We could apply the curve, not the cure, to this animation as well. So now if I save this and restart the process, then we might see this, but again, it's gonna be such a subtle effect because the animation is quite quick, 300 milliseconds, so you probably won't notice too much in this, but you can kind of see it slow down as it gets big and then shrink again, okay? If we change this to something like 1000 milliseconds, we probably will see this in a slightly more exaggerated way, but again, it is gonna be quite subtle. So let me try this. It slows in the middle, then goes back to normal, all right? Okay, so I like that effect, but I think that is too slow. So I'm going to go back to 300 and leave it as that. So let's just make sure this is still working. Yep, that looks pretty nice. So now we know about curves. Next up, we're going to be looking at animating our list items right here onto the screen when we first load the app.